This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Every artist needs a dope website. There's a link down in the description where you can get 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace. So check it out. Hey, what's up, y'all? I'm 10 Hundred. I'm an artist from Seattle, Washington, and I'm kind of stumbling around the internet. You know, poking here, poking there, seeing what's up on the old internet, and I came across this page. It is a species generator. Version 3. <laughs> Populate your worlds with these weird and wonderful creatures. So when I click this generator, Generate button right here it will just give me a random creature it's a random creature generator so I figured I don't know I like dumb video ideas <laughs> I'm gonna just uh, generate some creatures here and try to make cool pieces of art out of them so who knows what I'm gonna get but let's go ahead and click generate Boom. This creature is called Yehawup. Yehawup. Yehawup, yo ass. A familiar Tauric creature. Tauric. Does that mean like, like Taurus? Like a bull? Does that mean it kind of looks like a bull? I don't know. With an orangutan head. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. With a medium length horn on its forehead. Sweet. It has a chimpanzee torso and two medium length useless arms <laughs> that end in praying mantis claws. Jeez. It has the lower body of a wolf and a rat tail. Eight medium length giraffe legs. <laughs> <laughs> and human feet. What is this creature? It sounds freaky deaky. The Yeehaw Whoop body is covered in gelatinous skin. Ugh. How can it have the body of a wolf and gelatinous skin? It has the markings of a red panda in black, gray, white, and period. <laughs> Black, gray, white, and what? Average height, two feet. Lifespan, 30 years. 30 years of hell. It's got giraffe legs and human feet. Population, very rare. I would imagine this animal is very rare. Evolutionarily speaking, it doesn't seem like a survival of the fittest type of situation. Family life, they have complicated mating displays. <laughs> I would with their, just with their body alone, I would imagine that their mating displays are very complicated. On their Facebook status, they always write, it's complicated. They are strong enough to uproot trees at only two feet that's pretty good <laughs> they are very difficult to kill just because like when you go to kill one and you're aiming at it you're so shocked and confused by the makeup of its body that you can rarely make a shot so that's the yeah um okay this is not starting off easy let's jump into this drawing and see what i can come up with <laughs> this is gonna be truly bizarre <laughs> All right, so we got lower body wolf, rat tail, eight giraffe legs, human feet, oh man, <laughs> and red panda markings. So bizarre. All right, so let's just generally kind of put, give myself a little animal body area. This is kind of the head here. So he's got praying mantis arms here. I'll just rough those in. So he's got a chimp's upper body, a wolf's torso, but eight legs and kind of a rat tail. This thing is freaky deaky. And they're like giraffe legs? So gnarly. With human feet, I don't think I've ever, I'm not really good at drawing human feet, but <laughs> this is gonna be so messed up. This is like some Salvador Dali type of thing. Very surreal. I do apologize if this drawing gives anyone nightmares. It was not my intention to scare the living bejesus out of anybody. <laughs> Somebody get Stephen King on the phone. I think we got a new monster for his next novel. Wow. Well, that is by far one of the strangest things I've ever drawn. But for some reason, I think it's somehow looking kind of cool. Uh, I think I'm going to throw some inks on here and just uh, kind of refine my sketch. Ah, the Yeha Whoop. You know, the Yeha Whoop, I think he's just misunderstood. I mean, he may look a little bit freaky, he may look a little bit creepy, but really, he just wants to just come up to you and just stroke you with his limp praying mantis hands and just trot along on his eight giraffe legs with human feet. He's really a chill guy. Come on, give him a chance. Give him a chance, it's Yeha Whoop. All right, next one, generate. Ooflahi, <laughs> ooflahi. A hybrid tauric creature with a bear head, with a hairy mane, a goose neck, three sunken, vivid pink eyes, no visible nose, crinkled ears, and a sharp hooked beak filled with blunt teeth. Oh, this guy sounds badass. I am so into ooflahi. <laughs> ooflahi. It has broad shoulders, a large rib cage, a banded waist, and a droopy stomach. My dude, sounds just like me. It has seven short 
powerful arms that end in four fingered hands and seven dragon wings. Man, this guy is just seven arms, seven wings. Where am I going to put that seventh one? It has a camel lower body and a squirrel tail. This is one of the most zany creatures I've ever experienced in my life. Eight short kangaroo legs. Eight, why do I got to keep drawing eight legs? You know how hard it is to draw eight legs, seven arms, seven wings. This thing is going to have appendages just flying out everywhere and three backward facing toes. <laughs> Why am I doing this to myself? The Ooflahi's whole body is covered in silky hair, except its face, which is covered in rock-like skin. Its face, forearms, chest, and lower legs are vivid pink, while the rest of its body is vivid red. Average height, 33 feet. Dang, this is like a three-story building. Very rare. Temperament, aggressive. Oh, great. We got a 33-foot aggressive, seven-armed, eight-footed. Their kicks can shatter bones, and they can easily adapt to environmental changes. They communicate using moans and neighs. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> they are notoriously stubborn. Dang. Ooflahi. This one's going to be painful. Can I just, like, edit out some of these damn legs and arms? All right, let's jump into this and draw the Ooflahi. Wow, the Ooflahi. So there is 1, 2, 3, 8, 9, 10, 11, 16, 17, 18, 21 different descriptive things for the Ooflahi. Okay, so it's got a, a bear head, but it also says it has a sharp hooked beak with blunt teeth. Give it this crazy beak. Triffy mane. Speaking of mane, it has a big hairy mane. Give it lots of little eye wrinkles. It's funny, it says no visible nose. Maybe I should remove the nostril from, from this beak. Now, as for this mane, I like this because it kind of looks a little bit like a mullet right now. <laughs> Hopefully he's rocking that sweet 80s mullet. Give him some, like, a bit more of, like, an angry, angry brow arch here. <sighs> Hopefully he don't play no games. Oh, it says he has crinkled ears. I don't particularly know what that is, but maybe we'll just give him a bit of gnarliness to his ears. And then a gooseneck. What the heck? That mullet mane looking premium. Broad shoulders. <laughs> yeah, boy. And then it says a large rib cage. I think this guy is looking too much just like human body guy, so... Give him a bit of a, a bean body, and then we'll start carving that out. Camel lower body, so maybe he has sort of a, a hump here. Eight short kangaroo legs. It's hard to fit eight legs on a body. Okay, I don't know how those legs support this massive upper body, but that's what's going on. Here's his droopy ass stomach. Oof, la hizzle, looking good. So we need seven dragon wings. What is going on with this dude? Get away from me. He's got a bushy ass squirrel tail. Seven short, powerful arms with four-fingered hands. I just have like one arm here. His last arm is like a like a kickstand. <laughs> That's how all these legs back here can actually like keep him standing up because this last arm is just like, whoa, bro, I'm about to fall over. Got to balance with that. Oh man, nightmare material. So I said it has, and then lastly, it has rock-like skin on its face, which is interesting to say the least. Looks like the thing from Fantastic Four. Yeah, this is crazy. Oof la -hee. I don't want to draw you anymore, but I gotta persevere. This looks like the type of thing I used to draw when I was like five years old, just making up crazy characters, and I never really got it out of my system. Even today, all I want to do is just draw weird characters. All right, he's looking freaky. He's looking ugly. He's looking weird. Uh, I think I'll jump in and ink him, refine him a little bit, and <laughs> make another one of the craziest characters I've ever seen in my entire life. So here we go. Let's start inking. You can submit your short stories about Ooflahi to scare1000 at ooflahi.net. <laughs> I will read them all. By the way, that email address is fake. Who do you think would win in a fight, Uflahi or Yeha Wook? Uflahi is like 33 feet tall, but Yeha Wook, although he's only two feet tall, he can uproot trees. Let me know down in the comments who would win, Yeha Wook or Uflahi. <laughs> All right, last one. Let's go ahead and hit generate. I hope, <laughs> I hope I don't get like 10,000 legs and arms and wings and stuff. Come on, give me like two arms maybe, four feet. That's fine. Here we go. Generate. Boom. Geeks. G-E-A-X. I'm saying geeks for that. I don't know. A familiar multiped with a peacock head with two short horns above the brow. It has the body of a stegosaur, <laughs> sweet, bird wings, a kangaroo tail, 18 short elephant legs, no, 
18 18 what the hell do you need 18 legs for 18 short elephant legs and two toed hooves okay the geeks's body is covered in scales it has the markings of a red panda in brown sky blue forest green average height 45 feet this thing towers over the whatever that last one was called what was it called Oofla- this one towers over the Ooflahi by an additional 12 feet lifespan 77 years Jeez. it eats animal skin and crustaceans Ugh. so it just eats the skin and just leaves the rest grass their bite is strong enough to cut through steel Doom, son, that's crazy. And they can survive in temperatures up to 89 degrees Celsius. Do not know what that is in Fahrenheit. 192 degrees Fahrenheit. Jesucristo. That thing can handle some heat. They do not need to drink at all. Well, that is that is quite the capability. All right, my dude geeks, let's jump into this. Prepare to be born into existence. <laughs> oh, God, here we go. Let's get this geeks in. So it's got the head of a peacock. All right, it has two short horns above the brow. It has the body of a stegosaurus. And it's got 18 legs. Jeez. So we gotta do nine on each side. Got way too many damn feet here. Just the ultimate bear hug. I got 18 arms to wrap around you, girl. Girl. It has bird wings and a kangaroo tail. Give it some bird wings here. Give this dude a bit more like stegosaurus spikes going on here. Stegosauruses are dope. Dinosaurs used to be everything when I was a kid. What is it about dinosaurs that kids are just crazy about? Didn't stegosauruses have like some spikes on the end of their tail just to like shlazam somebody? That would hurt. So its body is covered in scales. All right, let's do that. There's no point in me sketching out with pencil every one of these scales. I'll do that once that I start uh, fleshing it out when I ink it. So, geeks, you freaky deaky geeky. I gotta say, besides the 18 legs, this was probably the most simple of all the creatures, which I'm kind of thankful for after drawing those other two. But let's jump into inking and see what's up with these geeks. Yeah, you geeks. You never want to get into a slap fight with my boy Geeks. He's also really good at ping pong. I once saw him eat five Nacho Bell Grandes in like five minutes. It was crazy, dude. His Tinder profile is popping. His favorite show is Better Call Saul. He makes sick beats. Back in high school, he used to skateboard a lot, but he's kind of giving up on that. All around Geeks is just, you know, he's one, he's a chill bro. He's a cool dude. My boy Geeks. Just wanted to shout him out. You know, he's dope. He's a dope dude. <laughs> All right, well, I got those drawings done. Three super crazy creatures. I was thinking it'd be really cool to bring them into Photoshop and add some digital color to kind of flesh them out and bring them to life. But first, I gotta let you know this video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one dynamic platform to build a beautiful website, run your business, sell products online, and build your brand. I love Squarespace. I've been using them for years and years and years. My 1000 art website is built on Squarespace, and it's how I sell my t-shirts and art products, paintings, prints, all kinds of stuff, along with hosting my portfolio as an artist and just staying connected with y'all. I really think that every artist needs a super dope website and Squarespace makes it easier than ever. They have these award-winning templates that are super beautiful, super clean, super classy. All you gotta do is pop your awesome content into their beautiful templates and you're off and running. You don't need to know how to code. You don't need to be an HTML guru. It's just really easy. And if you do run into any issues, they have award-winning 24-7 customer support and they have definitely helped me out with some issues in the past so what are you waiting for it's time for you to build a beautiful website to show the world your creativity so when you're ready go to squarespace.com to start your free trial and when you're ready to launch your website go to squarespace.com forward slash 100 for 10 percent off your first purchase thank you squarespace for sponsoring this video build a dope website you can do it <laughs> all right i think i'm ready to start coloring these drawings so let's see how this goes So I'm coloring these crazy cantankerous creatures in a computer creative crafter called Photoshop. <laughs> Photoshop is still my go-to program for coloring in my illustrations. I just have a system down. I really like it. If you guys want to check out a video where I kind of show you how I do my digital coloring in Photoshop, you could check out this video right here. But I think through the process of coloring, these creatures really kind of came to life, if you will. And it was just fun figuring out what colors they would be in the random creature generator 
generator. They did give me some colors to go off of, but I largely ignored those because A, I didn't really remember what they said, and B, I just wanted to do my own thing after all these rules and regulations of creating these dang creatures. I was like, come on, just let me choose my own colors. I'm like a color dude. I like doing this. So yeah, coloring these creatures in Photoshop, super fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it for this one. Super crazy video idea. I had a ton of fun making these crazy random creatures. The Ooflahi, the Yeha Whoop, and of course, my boy, Geeks, <laughs> holding it down. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, leave a like. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're not already, and you can even ring the bell. If you want to know exactly when the next video is coming out, I turned these guys into a crazy creatures sticker pack, but those are up for pre-order right now on my website on the merch page. So uh, pre-order one of those if you're interested. <laughs> thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring this video, and a huge, gigantic, special thank you to my patrons over on Patreon who support me on a monthly basis you guys each and every one of you are super rad thank you so much if you guys want to try out the random creature generator i put a link down in the description where you can find that thank you guys so much for watching i'm 1000 catch you guys on the next one peace out mm. all right it's the end of the video so it's time for a random comment shout out this one comes from bubblegum whiskers hey 10 hun love your work I searched your vids, but I couldn't place my finger on one that discusses what sprays you use. Would you be willing to give a bit of insight on your favorite brand of spray paint? Good question, Bubblegum Whispers. Oh, sorry, Whisker. Um, I use all different kinds of spray paints. Honestly, I kind of use whatever I can get my hands on. But I would say my favorite is Belton's Molotov spray paints. I also use Flame Blue. I use Montana Golds. You got to watch out for certain spray paints because like when you mix acrylic with them, for instance, like Montana 90. I believe I've had issues in the past where the chemical makeup of the spray paint actually rejects acrylics when you try to paint on top of it But I know for a fact that flame blue belt on Molotov and Montana golds work nicely with acrylic paints So if you're a mixed media artist like I am that's the one thing I would say keep your eye out for so that's the answer to that Thanks for the comment. There's your shout out. All right y'all catch you later. Peace